months, month after month after month. Um, these are the leading uh, types of businesses that get sales tax permits in Iowa. Um, I see we also have another question from our anonymous viewer. They're asking me if uh, labor is the same as a service. Um, yeah, basically. Labor, um, the, the tax on services is, is a tax on labor. So uh, yes, one and the same um, as, as far as that goes. There are actually, they're called enumerated services. And enumerated simply means they're listed in the Iowa Code as being taxable. Um, just to, to uh, spend a little bit more time on some of these services specifically, uh, the cosmetology services. Doesn't matter if you're a barber, cosmetologist. In the old days, it was always beauticians. Um, anything that's done um, to a person's hair, whether it be uh, coloring, cutting, um, giving a perm, something along that lines. If there's something done uh, for a person's nails, or maybe applying a facial or something uh, for, uh, for the skin. Anything that's done to enhance a person's appearance, that's done for purposes of enhancing one's appearance, uh, that's gonna be taxable under our services of uh, barber, cosmetology, beauticians. Um, again, lots and lots of these, um, these pop up all the time. We have uh, people applying for the permits to do this type of work every month. Uh, the janitorial services, this is another one that's pretty popular, okay? As a matter of fact, we do run an audit program on this. And you might be thinking, what type of audit program would you be running? Well, um, what we have found, there are lots of people that are very good about reporting their income on their income tax return. And if you're a, a sole proprietor and you uh, do some janitorial or cleaning work, you would report that income on a Schedule C. That's a federal schedule. Iowa does not have a Schedule C, so you attach a copy of the federal to your Iowa return. And the department uh, audits Schedule C, meaning we look to see what type of business someone is involved in, and um, we're, what we're doing is we're checking to see if uh, there should be some sales tax involved. Um, many times there uh, should be sales tax involved, but there is not, so um, you'll get a letter from the department if you fall into that category. But um, at any rate, on these janitorial services, it's very common for people to maybe have like a side job or a weekend job where they clean offices, maybe they clean houses. Well, janitorial services for commercial buildings are taxable. However, if you clean a residence and it is paid for by the owner of the residence, that service is not subject to tax. So for instance, um, if you work in an office and you have a janitor that comes in and cleans the office, that's gonna be a taxable service, okay? Um, if you like that particular uh, janitorial person and you say, hey, can you come and clean my house? And you're gonna pay them to do that. If they come and clean your home, you're the resident of the home, you're paying for that service, that is not subject to Iowa sales tax. So again, we do get questions on that frequently. And again, if we have any accountants out there or tax uh, preparers out there, keep in mind we do audit Schedule C to see if there is sales tax and the janitorial services is one of the big ones that we uh, seem to catch a lot of people at. Okay, lawn care, landscaping type of work. Um, this is a taxable service as well. Obviously, uh, the way the grass has been growing here just lately, uh, this is pretty popular. We have a lot of people that uh, sign up for this as well. This is uh, many our new permits that are issued each month. Uh, many of them include the uh, lawn care, landscaping types of businesses. So um, just be aware that this is considered to be a taxable service. And um, if you're hiring someone, it doesn't matter if it's uh, for, your, uh, for your office, if it's for uh, your residence, um, this service is gonna be subject to tax. Um, landscaping services um, are also taxable. Doing something to, uh, you know, to beautify the grounds, um, whether it be, again, commercial, residential, it doesn't matter if you've got someone planting shrubs putting out mulch and those types of things to make your yard look better or to make the grounds look better, uh, that's gonna be our taxable service as well. Um, also under this, uh, tree trimming and removal. Um, this, is, uh, this is another service that is subject to tax. Um, I'm, I'm kind of chuckling at this. I just had a great big limb go down in my yard. My son mm -hmm. and I cleaned it up last night. Uh, no sales tax involved because there was no money changing hands. I think my son ate, ate dinner though, so. Um, <laughs> But at any rate, something to be aware of. 
Uh, another service that is a taxable service, um, painting, papering, interior decorating. Um, this is something that, uh, let's say that you wanted to uh, just simply change the color of your, of your bathroom, for example. So you hire someone to do that for you. Um, that is going to be the taxable service. It would come under painting. Um, sales tax would be due on that. It doesn't matter if it's a residence. It doesn't matter if it's a commercial building. Um, if you're hiring someone to do painting for you and it is not connected with uh, any type of new construction or remodeling, uh, this is going to be a, a, a taxable transaction. Got a, another quick question on the lawn care. Um, it asks here, if you are, um, you are a business and someone does your lawn mowing and fails to charge you tax, do you then just remit use tax on that? Yep, that would be the proper, uh, the proper thing to do. Um, what I think I would do first is talk to the person who did the mowing and say, hey, what about sales tax? What's going on here? Um, if they are doing this for, um, for pay um, and you are a taxable customer, you're not exempt for some reason, uh, they should be charging you tax. So um, I would speak to the uh, one that's doing the service first of all and um, maybe point them toward the department so they can get registered and collect the proper tax. But if they do not, if for some reason they don't charge you any tax, the proper thing to do is report the use tax, uh, remit use tax on that particular transaction. All righty. Um, pet grooming. Pet grooming is another service that is, uh, that is taxable. Um, this is pretty popular anymore. I know when I was a kid growing up, the pet grooming was me. <laughs> you, uh, you know, the kids washed, washed the cat or dog or whatever the, uh, needed being done. But uh, there's a lot of people that take, uh, take the pet someplace to get groomed. Um, this is a taxable service and people do need to be aware of that. Uh, one thing, um, livestock grooming, you know, you've got uh, kids in the summertime that take the steer to the fair for 4-H and those types of things. That's not, that's not taxable under this. Uh, we're talking about taking the cat or dog, kind of like the pictures we have in the slide. Uh, those types of transactions would be subject to tax. I mentioned photography briefly just uh, earlier. Uh, photography is not a taxable service in Iowa, okay? It is treated as a sale of tangible personal property. What does this mean? Well, when you're going someplace to get your picture taken, uh, you know, to get a photo album or something along that line, that's a sale of a product or a sale of tangible personal property. So there will be sales tax in that transaction. Um, any of the fees for this that are associated with the uh, product or the purchase of the photos, this is going to be uh, considered to be taxable. This would include a sitting fee, okay? Um, so if you're going someplace, you're getting a family portrait taken and you're ordering uh, prints and they're delivering you a photo album full of prints, uh, that's going to be taxable and it would also include the sitting fee as well. Um, one thing though that I have noticed, there are a lot of uh, photography type of businesses out there that they don't actually sell the photos. All they do is they sell images on a website and you can click on the website and you can decide which ones you want and then you can get them printed yourself. In that situation, there was no delivery of tangible personal property or no delivery of a, of a photo um, or a book or anything like that. So there is no sales tax. So are you with me on that? If you've got someone that's just taking photos, putting them out there on some website, and then uh, you can pay your fee and you can download the, the images, that is not taxable because there was nothing tangible that changed hands. So again, something to keep in mind, something to be aware of. Lots of these folks around, uh, we get a lot of them getting sales tax permits. The ever popular vehicle repair. If you've got a vehicle, chances are that thing's gonna have issues at some point in time. Um, this is a taxable service. If you have to take it to the garage to get any types of uh, repairs done to it, um, anything mechanical, anything to the body and things like that, it is the taxable service of vehicle repair. Um, another uh, one of our popular services based on the number of new permits that are issued each month. Um, there's a lot of folks in this type of business as well. So something to keep in mind. Um, many of these publications too, I should mention to you, we do have um, many of these services, excuse me, we do have publications on them. So if you were to go to our website, remember I showed you the, uh, 
the picture of our uh, home page um, a little bit earlier. And if you click on publications, you can get publications for most of these uh, different services that we've talked about. There's a lot of them out there, so it's a good place to look for some information. Terry, we've got one question here from Bev. Let's see here. We have a, a question from Bev. Um, it says, we do inspections, repairs, and installations of hoists and cranes. Are these taxable or non-taxable? Well, um, if you're doing just a visual inspection where all you're doing is you're looking at it and then you're saying, here's what you should be doing or here's what you need to do, visual inspections are not taxable, okay? Just looking at it, you're not doing anything to it. Um, if you're doing some repairs, as soon as you get out and you take some tools to it and you're doing some physical repairs to that machinery, crane or hoist, that is a taxable transaction. Um, installation, yeah, it's gonna depend. What's involved in the installation? Um, what's, what's involved in the installation could be a taxable service. What we look at here is it has to be one of our enumerated services. Um, also can uh, depend on how you're billing things as well. So um, if you need more specific information than that, uh, please let us know. I know in the past what we've done, any questions we don't get to, we will um, we will put those in a word document and we will put them out on the website most directly if you need to okay uh, what do we have here uh, we had another question as well is the paint taxable if you are painting your new manufacturing plant or remodeling an old one um, okay sherry the uh, the paint um, if we're doing some painting uh, type of work it doesn't matter if it's commercial if it's new construction if it's an existing building the paint is always taxable, okay? Somebody's gotta pay tax on that paint. The, uh, the issue comes up to, uh, is the uh, labor to do the painting taxable? And if it's brand new construction, let's say I build a brand new house and the painter's coming in and doing everything, um, in that situation, they would not charge me any tax at all on the, uh, on the labor to paint my house because there is an exemption for that. Uh, one more question, then we're going to keep moving on here so I get through the information. We've got William. They're asking about snow removal. Uh, William, snow removal is uh, not a taxable service in Iowa. Um, this is one that uh, we get questions on all the time we have for years. Um, that one is not a taxable service. So, okay. Um, again, getting back to the presentation, what we've got up here is exemptions for services. And the one that we get into about the new construction exemption, and this is an exemption for labor or services. Um, any labor or service on or connected with new construction, reconstruction, alteration, expansion, remodeling of a building or structure is gonna be exempt from tax. So we just gave the example a little bit ago about I built a brand new house. And the painter, as part of the construction of my new house, the painter comes in and paints all the rooms for me. Uh, that service is connected with the new construction of my home, so in that situation, the painting, the labor to do that, is exempt from tax. Um, other exemptions for services, if the service is performed for an employer, and I don't want to confuse you on this, but uh, for example, um, I am an employee of the state of Iowa. I do work with Iowa taxes. I work for the Department of Revenue. If Courtney, our director, says to me one day, hey, Terry, get out there and mow the lawn in, in front of the Hoover State Office building, um, I'd say, sure, it'd be a nice day to do that, Courtney. Um, what would happen there is uh, I would be mowing, but that would not be a taxable service because the Department of Revenue, the state of Iowa, is my employer, and my services that I perform for my employer are not taxable. Okay? Hopefully that uh, clears it up about that uh, perform for an employer. Um, services purchased for resale. Um, a service that's purchased for resale is exempt from tax as well. What am I talking about here? Well, let's say that your, your vehicle, remember we said vehicle repair is a taxable service. If your vehicle, um, something breaks down, so you take it to the shop and the auto repair shop gets into something and they say, well, I can't fix everything here. I've got to send this out to another shop to uh, get your vehicle fixed. So they take it to another repair shop. The transactions between the two repair shops are not taxable because the, uh, the service is being purchased for resale. The shop that I took my vehicle to, 
they will charge me sales tax on the entire sales price. So hopefully that makes sense. Transactions, again, kind of a resale or a subcontractor type of situation. Uh, those Between those two folks is not subject to tax. Again, the shop I took my car to would tax me for the, uh, for the total repairs that were done. Um, another thing for exceptions, exemptions from services, if you are involved in selling products at retail, let's say you sell uh, um, appliances, for example, and you buy a uh, used appliance and it needs a little bit of work done before you can sell it. Any services that you get performed on that so that you can resell it later on, that's not going to be taxable. Again, if, if you're in the business of selling appliances, you're getting an old appliance fixed so you can sell it, um, there's gonna be no sales tax in that situation. Okay, um, we've also got a, um, one more quick question here before we move on. If a manufacturing company uses a hoist in the manufacturing process, would the repair to the hoist be taxable? Uh, generally speaking, that's going to be yes, because it is, uh, um, because it's just simply uh, machine repair. So uh, that's gonna be a taxable situation. Alrighty, quiz question again. We've got a plumber. They're installing all the pipes and plumbing fixtures during construction of a new home. Is this taxable or is this exempt? Well, based on the new construction exemption, this is gonna be exempt from sales tax because it again, it is performed in, uh, um, in connection with the new construction. So there will be no sales tax on the plumbing services. What's our tax rate here in Iowa? Well, the state sales tax rate and the state use tax rate is 6%. Okay, we've been at that for quite a few years now. In addition to that, many areas in Iowa have a 1% local option sales tax or a lost. So, Depending on where things are happening here in Iowa, the rate can be either 6% or 7%. Something to keep in mind, and I have had to make some uh, follow-up um, calls to businesses on these types of uh, things when they come up. Um, Iowa law says that tax cannot be paid nor absorbed by a retailer. So a retailer cannot come out and say, hey, I'm paying the sales tax for you today. Um, they are not allowed to do that. They can have sales tax included in the price if it's listed, if it says so. Um, a couple of common examples. Um, one that I always like to give, after you listen to Terry speak about taxes for here over the lunch hour, you might need a drink on the way home from work. So if you stop someplace and you order a drink, in many cases, um, bars, taverns, those types of places, they usually have tax included in their price. So if you order a, uh, a bottle of beer for $3, that's all you pay is $3. You don't pay $3 plus tax in most situations. That bar, if they do that, that's okay. But they should have a sign hanging up that says, hey, this price includes Iowa tax. Um, there's also uh, services can do that as well. Um, a lot of times, um, if we have any, uh, any ladies out there that maybe go to a nail salon, many times nail salons, they have tax included in the price as well. That's, that's pretty common in that type of business. If they do, that's great, but it needs to say so. If it says, hey, it's $25 to do something to your nails, tax included, we're good with that. Um, they, they need to make sure that that is posted. How I get involved in this is uh, if we get complaints, um, eventually on something like this, many times a complaint may come to me to do some follow-up. And I'll usually have to contact the business and just explain, here's how you can do things. Just another quiz question for you here. Is this ad legitimate? Can this ad be put out there as far as Iowa sales tax is concerned? This one says sale, save up to 30% off. No sales tax, store-wide. Well, the answer to that is no. Um, that ad is not legal for Iowa sales tax purposes. You cannot um, advertise that you're not charging tax. We do have one situation where there's no tax due where it normally is. Um, that's coming up here on the first Friday and Saturday of August. We've got the Iowa sales tax free holiday for items of clothing. 
Um, there's no sales tax on, on those uh, particular days for our uh, tax holiday. But other than that, if you sell something taxable, you either have to add the tax onto the price, or if it's included in the price, you need to say so. Uh, let's just take a quick question here. We've got our friend, Mr. Anonymous, or Mrs. Anonymous viewer. They say, can you vend clothing and such at a concert without a tax ID number, even if you're waiting for it to come in the mail? Um, First of all, if you're going to be selling things at a place like, a, like an event or a concert, you do need to charge tax. And it, our, uh, our um, position or our policy has always been, as long as you have applied for the permit, even though you have not received it yet, you're good to go. You can uh, start in business, you can start collecting tax in your sales. If you apply for an Iowa sales tax permit, eh, depending on workload, it takes about four to six weeks to get that permit. So um, a lot of times, um, if you're gonna make a sale right away, you may not have your permit, but it's okay to go ahead and make sales. As long as you've applied, you're good to go. All righty. Um, tax permits for Iowa sales and use tax purposes. Uh, the first one that we have up here, we have a retail sales tax permit. This is uh, what is shown um, on the screen here, the top one. The number one just means retail sales tax. That's all that means. The next two digits are the county number where the business is located. We issue permits by the county where the retailer is located at. Um, so in this example, um, county number 85, I think it's Story County, I believe. Um, then there are six digits after that. Um, that would be your sales tax permit number. Again, retail sales tax is for businesses located in Iowa, taking, uh, making taxable sales in Iowa. Retailers use tax, um, if you recall, this is for businesses located outside the state of Iowa that are making taxable sales in Iowa. Their uh, number always starts with a two. Um, so that's how we know it's a retailer's use tax um, permit. Consumers use tax, uh, this one always starts with a nine. Um, just briefly, uh, without getting too far out of, out of uh, line here, consumers use tax is, um, Consumers use tax is when you purchase something, usually from out of state, and you, you've got it for use in Iowa. Um, we'll uh, discuss that. I know we spend a lot more time on that in, uh, in part two for sure, um, coming up next month. But um, that one always starts with nine. If you are, um, again, the next two digits are the county number, um, county number 64 in this example. There's also another type of permit that you need to be aware of or you should be aware of, um, direct pay. And these companies, there's only about two dozen of them, maybe up to 30 of them located in the state of Iowa. These are large companies. Um, these companies, if they have a direct pay permit, they pay no tax to any vendors. They buy everything tax exempt, they sort it out themselves internally, and they remit the tax directly to the Department of Revenue. So if you ever run across one of these types of businesses and they say, hey, don't charge me tax. I am a direct pay permit holder. That is legitimate. However, they need to provide you with a sales tax exemption certificate, which uh, we'll talk about here more in just a little bit. Um, and they need to give you their direct pay permit number. There's a place on the exemption certificate for that. And the fourth digit is always the number nine. So in this example, 1-77-9. Zero, 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 zero. Um, that tells you that it is in fact a direct pay permit if the fourth digit is the number nine. Okay, uh, let's see here. We've, we've got a question again here. This is, this is a good one. If, if your employee does not have a detailed receipt from an Iowa restaurant, does the employer have to pay the tax on the Iowa to the Department of Revenue on the ending balance, excluding the tip. Um, if they do not have a detailed receipt. Uh, there's gonna be sales tax, if, if you purchased a meal, that is taxable. Uh, the tip is not taxable, it's not part of the taxable gross receipts, if it is given on your own free will. That means if it's not required. Um, an example, a lot of times um, if you've got a large party, uh, many restaurants will automatically add their gratuity on. In that situation, if it's a requirement to have the meal, 
um, that tip is going to be part of the taxable purchase price of that meal. So um, hopefully uh, that answers your question. Um, there is sales tax due on a meal. Um, if it's not detailed or anything, if it just says the, the meal price and has a, a total down at the bottom, it's going to be taxable, less any tip um, that was given on your own free will. Uh, one more thing here, we've got Donna. Um, I've heard companies advertising will pay your sales tax on commercials. Is this legal? No, it is not. Um, again, this is something, if somebody is advertising that way, a lot of times we're going to get a phone call or somebody's going to email us and let us know that. And in those situations, someone from the Department of Revenue um, will contact that business and uh, explain to them that that is not legitimate. They are not allowed to do that. All righty. We've talked about Iowa sales tax permits a little bit. Um, now we better determine if you need one or not. Um, do you need an Iowa permit, a sales tax permit? Well, are you located in Iowa? If the answer to that is yes, and you are making taxable sales in Iowa, you're gonna need an Iowa sales tax permit. The key there is both of those have to occur. Located in Iowa, that's pretty simple. But part two, making taxable sales in Iowa. You have to be doing that in order to need a sales tax permit. If you're in business, if you're located in Iowa, you do not need a sales tax permit if you are not making taxable sales. You can make sales that are exempt from tax and no permit is needed. So it is a key in order to have a sales tax permit, you've got to be making taxable sales. Sales tax permits, you've got to have one if you're making taxable sales. It is illegal to operate without a sales tax permit if you're selling things at retail. Each location must have its own permit. And by that I mean, let's say you have a restaurant and you open up, you have a restaurant located in Des Moines. You need a sales tax permit for that restaurant. If things go really well for you and uh, a few months down the road, you open another restaurant, maybe over in Iowa City, you're gonna have to get another sales tax permit for that location. So every permanent location that you have, you've gotta have a sales tax permit for each location. I know some people go to, uh, maybe they go to craft shows, maybe they go to uh, fairs or different events, uh, flea markets and they sell things. Those are just temporary locations. You know, you're set up um, at a fairground, you're set up at a high school gymnasium or some type of event hall. Um, you only need one sales tax permit in that situation. And usually that is your permanent location or possibly your home location if um, you operate your business out of your home. Um, so each permanent location where, you, where somebody can come up there and knock on the door um, or walk into your store or walk into that location, um, you're going to need a sales tax permit for each one of those locations. When it comes time to file returns, um, you can file returns by individual sales tax permit. That's what everybody does that has only one permit. Or if you do have multiple sales tax permits, you can get a consolidated number and you can do a consolidated filing. Um, it's not mandatory that you do so. Um, it's, it's up to you if you want to do that or not. How do we apply for a sales tax permit? Well, the, uh, the way that you do this, you have to complete the Iowa business tax registration. And this is something that uh, you can do online. We've got a link up here uh, to our website that you can complete it online. Um, I know some people maybe are not into uh, doing things online or don't feel comfortable with it. That's okay. You can get online and print off our paper application. If you want to go the paper route, that's fine as well. Um, you're going to have to mail it in or fax it in. Um, as I said, the processing time is uh, in the four to six week uh, time frame usually. It just depends on the workload. Um, that's going to determine how long it takes to get your permit. But as somebody asked a little bit earlier, um, as long as you've applied for your permit, you can go ahead and open for business, even if you do not actually have the permit in your possession yet. Um, this is just shows you where the link is on our website. It's on kind of the lower left hand corner of our home page. Do I have to renew the permit every year? Well, the answer to that is no. Once you get a sales tax permit, that thing is good forever 
until either you cancel it out or if worse comes to worse, we can revoke it from you. Um, the only time we do that though is if you really mess up a lot. If you bounce checks to us, if you don't file, if you're late all the time, you have issues like that. Um, the department can and we will revoke your sales tax permit if you have issues. Now, I don't want to sound mean when I say this, but um, by the time it gets to the revocation, um, to the revocation process, you've usually had a lot of warnings, a lot of letters, a lot of contact from the department. So, um, you know, pay attention when you get something in the mail. Um, again, we don't like to revoke sales tax permits. We don't want to put people out of business, but uh, if, if worse things come to worse, we will do that. One thing to keep in mind, once you do have a tax permit with the Department of Revenue, you have to file with us whether there's any tax due or not. You still must file tax due or not. As long as your permit's active, we expect you to file. Okay, um, again, just checking to make sure you're still with me here. What is the annual renewal fee for an Iowa sales tax permit? Well, if you were awake for the last couple slides, if I didn't put you to sleep yet, um, this one's gonna be zero. There is no annual fee to renew a sales tax permit. There's no fee to even get a permit to start with. Um, just something to be aware of. Okay, what about filing? Well, it depends on how much money you expect to collect. When you are completing the business tax registration, you need to put down um, your filing status. There are, very, there are uh, categories listed there, and um, I'll show you that in just a minute. But um, keep in mind that this is not carved in stone. Many times when people start in business, they maybe have a rough idea of what they hope to do, and uh, maybe things a few months down the road, maybe things go better than you expected. We hope it does. Um, in those situations, we can always change your sales tax um, filing status. Uh, it's not a big deal to do that. We've got a form that you can request to change. So uh, pick a filing frequency, it's on the application. Um, again, the dollar amounts are listed here. If you are a large business that is collecting more than $5,000 a month, you, you're gonna have to do this on a semi-monthly basis. This requires electronic filing and electronic payment. Um, you're gonna have to do it that way. If you are collecting less than $5,000 per month, but more than $500 per month, you need to file and remit tax on a monthly basis to the department. Quarterly is less than $500 per month, and annual types of businesses, they are less than $120 per year. Um, we've got our, uh, my favorite person again, Mr. or Mrs. Anonymous viewer is asking, do you have to file a zero monthly deposit if no taxable sales in that month? Yes. Go ahead and get into our e-file and pay system, put a zero in there, and hit the submit button. You'll get a confirmation, and that shows that you did file. Um, the way we are at the Department of Revenue, the way we think of things is if you are set up to file monthly and you don't, we're wondering what's going on here. Um, are you keeping some money? Are you holding out on us? What's going on? So by you filing and putting a zero in there, that tells us that, yep, you're still out there, you're still in business. Um, there just was no tax due for that particular uh, month. And um, does that raise a, raise a red flag? Not necessarily. Some businesses are seasonal. Maybe they don't do a whole lot in the winter. I know lawn care services in Iowa, they're not mowing too many lawns um, come January. So um, it doesn't raise a red flag. Just file and uh, you'll be good. Okay, um, filing returns, making payments. This is something that can be done electronically through our e-file and pay system. Um, many of you out there, I'm sure you've done some filing before or you have seen, uh, seen our uh, e-file and pay system. This works out pretty well. When you get a permit from the Department of Revenue, we are going to give you a BEN or business e-file number. That comes to you um, a letter from the Department of Revenue when you get your permit number. You're also gonna get a user ID, and for everybody, the user ID that we assign is 0001. So three zeros and a one is your user ID. Um, you can add users to it, you can change that up, but that's what the department, everybody starts out with that. When it comes to a password, this is something that you set up, 
okay? Um, the first time you get into the e-file and pay system, you're gonna have to set up a password so you can get in in the future. We don't know what that password is. Only you know what that password is. So make sure that you uh, keep track of that. Um, you're always gonna need your BEN, you're gonna need your user ID, and you're gonna need your password to access the e-file and pay system. And one thing too, make sure you have plan B. Um, if you are the person who takes care of this, make sure you got a backup plan. Make sure that somebody else in the office um, has access so they can get in and file. You can set them up as an additional user. Um, I cannot tell you the, uh, the way things are around the Department of Revenue. When it's the due date for a return, we start getting phone calls and emails and a lot of contacts because people lost their BEN, they lost their password, they, uh, the person that normally does that called in sick that day. Um, so make sure that you keep this, it's very important. Um, it may save you some penalty and interest um, if you file a late return. Terry, quick question on um, if uh, your sales have increased over time and you maybe had been a, uh, an annual or a monthly filer and now uh, how do you make that transition? Okay, uh, good question, uh, Dan. Um, if for some reason, let's say you started out as a quarterly filer when you got your sales tax permit, and as we said a couple slides ago, that meant you're collecting less than $500 a month, but now business has picked up. You're doing much better than that. Well, to request it, we've got a form on our website for change, cancellation, correction. There's a link right on the left-hand side. It's just above what you clicked on to uh, apply for a permit. Um, you can click on that and you can uh, request a change to a new filing status. The only time we're gonna change you though is at the start of a quarter. Um, unless, of course, you're an annual filer, then the change will take place at the beginning of the year. But uh, you can do that. You can uh, request a change. E-file and pay will not let you file in any status other than what you're signed up unless you request the change. So you must do that. Uh, let's see here. We've got Monica. While we're talking about doing some oh, filings here. That one. What's we, that? We took care of that. We took care of that. Oh, we just did. All righty. Good deal. Um, you need to contact the Department of Revenue. Yep, Monica, do that change form and uh, we'll get you set up as semi-monthly. Second question is asking about the changes to making manufacturing that are coming up. Okay, um, we do um, with our, um, we do have some changes um, on some things related to uh, the manufacturing industry. What you can do, there is a publication, I don't have information to discuss here with you and that's, that's a little outside of today's class, However, get on our, uh, our website, click on our link to publications. Remember, it's down toward the bottom of our homepage under businesses, there's a link for publications. Get in there and then scroll through the list until you find the uh, publication for sales tax. It does have the new information out there that's uh, effective July 1st. All righty, uh, we've got Cody out here. Uh, what happens if you don't change the status and continue to file quarterly? Uh, when you have enough sales to be a monthly filer. Is there a penalty? Well, um, what you need to do is, as soon as you realize you need to change, you need to get that in. Um, you need to request a change. If we don't actually go out of the way looking for you and we're not gonna penalize you right off the bat, but um, if, if we do notify you that, hey, you need to change and you don't wanna do it, um, you could get a penalty in that situation. But don't be afraid that you're gonna get in trouble. Step forward, as soon as you realize you should change, step forward, request the change, we will get you changed. Again, we do not automatically go out looking to catch people to get uh, penalty and interest for that. Um, I know in the past, um, I don't know that we've done this recently, but in the past, we used to run a program um, in checking filing statuses, and then if people needed to change, we would usually send them a letter. Um, again, I'm, I'm a little outside of that area, uh, so I can't say if we've done that recently or not, but um, it is something that uh, the department keeps an eye on on occasion anyway. All righty, let's see here. Did I do it again? I think I got off. Oh, no, we're good. Um, the e-file and pay system, again, this is from our homepage. When you do your filing, click on our link to, uh, to e-file and pay. Um, we just had a returns here due on the 20th, so just the other day we had monthly sales tax was due. Uh, we did have some people contacting us, they were having issues with e-file and pay. What it comes down to in many, many cases 
is using the correct browser. Um, Internet Explorer and Firefox, those will definitely work for sure. Uh, there is information on our website that tells what browsers to use, but I know those two work, work for sure. If you want to use something else, if you use Chrome, it may or may not work for you. So if you're having issues, if things aren't acting right, uh, make sure that you use Internet Explorer or uh, Firefox, because I guarantee those will work. We got a couple new questions. First one there related to the previous one. Okay. Uh, if a company has been filing sales tax on a quarterly basis for many years and it earns in excess of five thousand a month in tax, should the company change now to semi-monthly, or will the Department of Revenue allow the company to continue doing quarterly filing? Um, get your change form in right away. Uh, we want you to change, uh, that's a huge difference too, from quarterly to semi-monthly. But yeah, just submit that uh, change canceler correction form that's on our website and uh, get it in and we'll get you changed at the uh, beginning of the next quarter is usually when we do the changes. Okay, there's Ann. Hey Ann, how are you doing? Um, I've known Ann for a few years. Um, will we be doing a session strictly for manufacturers as has been done in previous years? At this time, Ann, we don't have one scheduled. I know there are some uh, changes as of July 1st. A couple people have already uh, mentioned that here today. Um, we're looking at it, but as of right now, we don't have anything um, on the schedule um, as I speak. But uh, glad, that you, uh, glad that you brought that up. Okay, um, I just jumped back over to the, uh, to the presentation again. We're back to the PowerPoint. And uh, what I've got here is just the entry screen for uh, getting into e-file and pay. In the top portion of the screen, it has a place to put in the business e-file number or BEN. Um, one thing too, it's not related to sales tax, but the lower portion of this screen is for people to make individual income tax payments, corporate income tax payments, or they can also do consumer's use tax as well um, if they would like to. That again is something totally different, different tax types, it's outside of this class, but you can do that um, if you've got a BEN number or if you do not, you can file as not enrolled. Again, that's for individual income, corporate income, and also for uh, consumer's use tax. So again, something to be aware of. All righty, quiz question again. Let's see if everybody's awake here. I file my sales tax returns quarterly. When should I receive my blank return in the mail? Should I get it a month before it's due, a week before it's due? All returns are sent at the beginning of the year, or the department does not mail returns? Well, the answer to this one is we're not going to mail returns to you. Um, you uh, file through the e-file and pay system. If anybody is out there and has, maybe they've got a client that doesn't have computer access, we will still allow them to file paper. Um, however, we're not going to provide it to them. Um, what's going to happen is they're going to have to have someone go out there on our website and print off a blank quarterly return for sales or use taxes. Um, maybe they have to go to the library and print off a form, but again, we don't provide the forms. Um, you can file paper if you so choose, but uh, e-file and pay works pretty slick. If you've got your password, your BIN number, and your user ID, you can get in and do that just slicker than can be. It really works, works out well. A couple of things to keep in mind. Um, the, the normal statute of limitations is, uh, is three years. And I say normal because there can be other circumstances where it could be longer than that. Um, perhaps in a criminal situation, the statute of limitations could be longer. Maybe if uh, somebody was operating without a permit, they should have had a permit, and the department catches up with them, we can go back more than three years for that as well. But uh, again, outside of some of those special circumstances, the normal statute of limitations is three years. Sales tax permits, um, if you've been in the tax business for a while and working with sales taxes, if you remember way back in the day, we used to send out a nice uh, sales tax permit that kind of had a pinkish, purplish, flowery border around it, printed up on some real nice card stock, and we used to say for years, put this up on your wall, show the whole world that you are registered to collect Iowa tax. We did away with that requirement quite a number of years ago, so you do not have to have the permit posted for public display. Iowa does not issue tax exempt numbers. We only issue tax permit numbers, which allow you to collect and remit Iowa tax. 
A sales tax permit is not a license to buy tax free. Um, again, it only allows you to, to uh, collect and remit Iowa tax. A couple of exemptions, uh, some things that are exempt from tax. Anything that's purchased for resale, I gave some examples of this a little bit earlier uh, today. Um, if it's purchased for resale, it's exempt from tax. Hopefully when you sell the item, you'll be selling it to a taxable customer, you'll collect tax at that time. Interstate commerce is always exempt from tax. What does that entail? If you're located here in Iowa, you're shipping your products outside the state of Iowa, um, there's no Iowa tax due on that. Is there tax due at the state it's going to? Could be, depending on circumstances. Uh, but however, there is no Iowa tax due when you ship a product outside of Iowa. We also do not tax freight, transportation, shipping, whatever you'd like to call it, if it involves the transportation to get product from me, the seller, to you, the purchaser. Okay, I'm over in the Davenport area. If I sell something to you and ship it to you in the Des Moines area, that shipping, that transportation to get the product to you is not taxable as long as I separately stated um, on the invoice. And it's also reasonable. By that I mean it's based on actual transportation charges. It's not a makeup thing. And, and an example would be you buy a product from me for $100. The shipping is $10. If I jockey the numbers around and I say, oh, there's no tax on shipping, so I'll just charge you $100 to ship a $10 product. Eh, it doesn't work that way. Um, so again, as long as it's actually based on transportation, separately stated, not taxable if it's to get product between seller and purchaser. Um, exemption certificates are used to, um, to document exempt transactions. This is a blank form that's available on our website. You can uh, print this off. Um, it has to be um, completed, however. Um, if you are purchasing something from a vendor and you are saying, hey, do not charge me tax, I am exempt for some reason. Maybe it's a resale transaction. Complete this, this is the documentation you must give it to the seller. The seller will keep this in their records in case uh, they're ever audited by the department. And that way this is the, the supporting documentation to show why they did not charge tax. Um, one thing to keep in mind, these gotta be completed. Uh, this is an example of one, and this is an old form, but this is an example of a certificate that they didn't put any reason for uh, claiming to be exempt. The part that's circled there. This is not a valid certificate because it doesn't tell why they're claiming to be exempt. Another example, they didn't tell us what kind of business they're involved in. Uh, the part that's blocked in there, um, there's also a, another part toward the top that has the general nature of the business and the telephone number. None of that's completed, so it's not valid. These things have to be completed in order to be valid. Question for you, one more time. A retailer who has an Iowa sales tax permit purchases a display case for their store. Because they have a sales tax permit, they complete an Iowa sales tax exemption certificate and give it to the business where they bought the display case. Is this okay? Well, the answer to that is no. Um, they're not buying this display case to resell. They're buying it to use in their store. It's part of the tools of the trade, so to speak. It's part of their equipment. They owe tax on that. There's not an exemption. A couple of things just to be aware of. Um, Iowa, we do have a tax research library. Um, the tax research library is, uh, is a place that you can search and get some information. When you email us or call us with a question, if uh, myself anyway, if I don't know the answer off the top of my head, this is one of the first places I go. I do a couple of keywords. I do a search to see if we've got something out there in our library. Um, if, uh, if there may be something, if you have a question, maybe somebody else has already asked that same question. So that's something that, uh, that may help you if you have a question. Um, again, this is our website, tax.iowa.gov. Um, this is a good place to get information. I've already mentioned our publications several times here today. You can also subscribe to our email updates as well. Uh, these are pretty handy. I subscribe to all of them. All you have to do is put in your information. You will get them automatically. They don't cost anything. They are available on the various uh, topics that are shown here on, our, uh, on the screen right now. Um, the way I look at it is this. I would rather have something and not need it than to need it and not have it. Um, some of these things, uh, when they come out, 
it, they really don't concern me at all. Um, if I get something like that, I take a glance at it and then I can delete it. Um, again, it's, it is a, a good thing to have. It's another way to stay in touch with the Department of Revenue. The department is on Twitter. Um, believe it or not, is anybody, uh, please, please write in the Q and A if you uh, follow us on Twitter. We do put some tweets out there every working day of the month, sometimes more than that if we've got an issue that pops up. Um, we, uh, we do have that, uh, um, we do have Twitter available. So by golly, follow us on Twitter. It is a good way to keep in touch with the department. We're also on Facebook. And one thing I can tell about this is we need more friends. So get out there on Facebook and like us, friend us on Facebook. Um, again, we put information out there every working day of the month. If uh, there is a big issue that pops up, we'll put something else out there uh, more often than that. But uh, it's just another tool. It's another way to stay in touch with the department. If you need some more information on Iowa sales or use tax here today, um, we've got our publication, uh, the Iowa Sales and Use Tax Guide. If you still have questions, you can always give us a call between 8 and 4.15. Um, our toll-free number is listed there, or you can email the department as well. So if any of you have a question that you didn't get uh, answered here today, um, I see there are a few questions on there, go ahead and email us. Depending on what the question is, I may be the person that responds to that email. So these are a few ways to, uh, to get help if you do have questions. There's one quick one here left. So it let's, has to do with thresholds again. Okay, let's, let's just check this one out here uh, for Monica. When you look at the $5,000 a month threshold, is that sales tax only or do you include use tax in that? Hmm. And actually she meant do you include local Oh, local tax. Tax. okay, <laughs> thanks a lot. Yeah. Um, sorry I didn't see that part, so good deal. Um, the, uh, it, it's just the state sales tax is, is all that's used in those, uh, um, in the thresholds. Just the state sales tax, the local option tax is not. So hopefully that helps out just a little bit for you. Um, a couple of disclaimers here and then we'll, we'll look in if there's any other questions that are left. Um, in this day and age, identity theft is huge. So make sure that um, you don't give out some information that you don't want to. Um, by that I mean if you are contacted by the Department of Revenue, we always identify ourselves. Um, we do not ask you to provide your full social security number by email or in the, in the uh, regular U.S. postal mail. Um, many times what we might ask you, if you're dealing with me, I'll always ask for the last four digits. Um, so don't give out your full social security number um, you know, by email or through the mail. We don't send out uh, emails asking for personal or financial information. So just be aware of that. Um, if you're unsure if something's actually from the department, let us know. Don't give them any information and uh, you can always call us or email us um, and just say, hey, I've got a contact from such and such. Do they actually work at the Department of Revenue? I get those kind of things fairly frequently and I have no problem with that. Um, Probably some of them you're maybe hoping they don't work for the Department of Revenue so you don't have to call them back. But um, with that, uh, by all means, if you're unsure, check with us. We will uh, make sure that you're not giving out information that you shouldn't be. As always, the purpose of this webinar is to uh, give out some information um, on Iowa taxes. If you're involved in an audit or protest, we can't get involved in it. That's not the purpose of today's uh, webinar. Contact the person you're dealing with um, regarding your protest or your audit and uh, work your questions through that way. Uh, this is not the place for that. Got through, and by golly, we are just a minute or two after, so we did pretty good. Uh, I was just gonna take a, a look at a couple of these questions that we have left. Um, we've got another one here on, on filing. If we have to pay uh, semi-monthly, do we estimate the first half of the month? Um, you don't have to give the exact figure, uh, Shannon, and uh, you're, you're catching me just off, off uh, balance here just a little bit. Um, if I remember correctly, and you can email in if, if you need to get more specifics, but I believe as long as it's equal to uh, the actual amount or at least one-sixth of the uh, previous quarter, um, ex excuse me, yeah, the one-sixth of the previous quarter, that's okay. We do not expect it's a deposit 
deposit does not mean you have to have it down to the penny, okay? Or down to the nearest dollar, I should say. Um, at the end of the quarter, though, everything has to reconcile to the nearest dollar. But um, Shannon, if, if, you, um, if you need something a little more specific than that, but I believe it is one sixth of the previous quarter, um, email us, idr at iowa.gov, and uh, we'll get you the specifics on it. Uh, we've got another one here um, from Cynthia. I want to start a retail business, and the company for which I order materials from says they charge me sales tax when I order the merchandise. How does that work? Well, um, Cynthia, what I'm thinking um, could be going on here, are you um, talking about a situation where you're like an independent sales representative for, for a company? Um, I don't want to give company names, but um, some of these large companies that have these independent sellers all around the state of Iowa, many times we get into an agreement with these companies. And what happens if we get into an agreement with them, they take care of all the tax um, so that you and the other independent sellers do not have to, okay? Uh, that I'm kind of thinking that might be the situation you're asking about. Um, if you're not sure about that, um, you can also email the, the department and we will look into it and make sure that that company is under an agreement. But does that make sense? For simplicity purposes, so that we don't have to have all 88 individuals in the state of Iowa that are selling the same products you are get a permit, a lot of times the home company takes care of that. So um, it is possible that uh, they may take care of the sales tax um, for you. Um, again, email us if you're not sure. We'll look into it and make sure your situation that that is the case. Okay, um, how do we get a copy of this handout from the webinar? Um, are these on? Um, the archived. They, they are archived. So when you, uh, where you went to sign up for this uh, webinar, they will be uh, archived there and you can get a copy of it that way. All righty, uh, we've got another one here. Uh, let's see, we've got uh, William. We've got an Illinois dealer or customer with resale sales tax exemption in Illinois. They come to Iowa to pick up merchandise. Are they exempt or taxable in Iowa? Um, just stepping back a little bit, uh, William, um, resale is a valid exemption in Iowa. Um, it doesn't matter to us that you're buying it to resell in another state, but resale is an exemption. So if you come to Iowa, you complete an Iowa sales tax exemption certificate, you can purchase things for resale. So that would make it exempt from tax in Iowa. Uh, what do we have here? We got another, we got a lot of uh, filing issues today. Um, Semi-monthly filer, is it okay to make estimated sales tax deposits based off of past quarter sales and then true up with the quarterly tax return? Um, this kind of goes back, uh, uh, Cody, I don't have the exact, I believe it's one sixth. Um, you might want to email, I can give you the exact uh, language that's in our rules as far as um, making your uh, estimated deposits. Um, you can make estimated deposits. Again, I'm, as I sit here before you, I don't have the exact language in front of me on how we do that. Um, but as long as it all bounces out at the end of the quarter, that's, that's the key thing. But that doesn't mean you can send us a dollar the first half of the month, a dollar the second half of the month, and so on, until the end of the quarter, and then send us, you know, eighteen thousand um, dollars. You do have to make more of a deposit than that. But shoot us an email. Um, I'll get you the uh, um, I'll get you the actual language that tells you how to figure the uh, the deposits for a semi-monthly filer. And last thing we have, uh, Cynthia. Yes, independent seller. Um, Based on what you're saying without knowing any more details, that is definitely a possibility um, with the company that you're dealing with. If they are telling you that, you might just say, uh, you might ask them what is their Iowa tax permit number. Um, and that will, uh, I guess that would more assure you that they are set up to do that. Again, you can also check with us to be sure, but from what you're telling me, Cynthia, I'm thinking that uh, that is the case for your situation. Alrighty, well, um, Thank you for attending today. Uh, looks like we had a pretty good turnout. Hopefully we uh, provided some information to you that, uh, that is, uh, will prove helpful to you. We've got another webinar with part two. That's coming up here, July I believe 20th. it's July 20th. Yep, so uh, we hope to, see you, hope to see you again. That's part two. We go into a little bit more detail on some things.
things uh, in part two. So we hope to see you again uh, next month. And I'd like to thank everybody for attending today and have a super day. Thanks, Gary. Start. I don't know if we're still on. Let's mute. Yep, I think we're still on.